Hi folks, this video is about PNF or pre-next normal form. Pause your videos now and see if you can put this sentence into PNF. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. If you don't know what PNF is, um, here's the definition. It's when you have all the quantifiers wide scope. So all the quantifiers are stacked up out front in here of the sentence. So that's why this original sentence is not in PNF because these quantifiers are buried in here. They're too narrow scope. They're narrow scope on this uh, arrow here. So if you wanted to make this multiple choice, here's some possible answers. You can see if what you think is the right answer is among any of these. So if you didn't work on the problem previously, here's your last chance to pause your videos before I talk about the answer and how to solve it. What you should be doing is giving a chain of equivalence in order to prove this. So you should be citing as justifications in each transformation one of these first order equivalence principles. It could be one of the ones from this list, like De Morgan's for quantifiers, or the Boolean definition of the conditional, or you might also need any of these principles too. For pre next normal form problems, variable switch is quite common, the null quantification is quite common, uh, Boolean definition for conditional, and De Morgan's for quantifiers. Those are all principles you might be uh, using commonly. Okay, my first recommendation whenever you're doing these transformations is to get the thing out of conditional form and put it into its Boolean structure. So Boolean definition for conditionals is my first step. That's because when there's an arrow here, there's hidden negations and you have to be careful about negations. Because remember De Morgan's for quantifiers, when you push a, a quantifier past a negation symbol or vice versa, you have to flip the quantifier. So just because this is an existential right here does not mean when you pull it out front, it's gonna be an existential. It depends upon all the negation symbols and what has to move past them. So my first step is to put it into Boolean definition for quantifiers, because now I can push this negation in. I need to get this quantifier here wide scope, so I need to get it first past this negation before I can then get it past this disjunction. So understanding scoping is absolutely essential here. You have to be able to parse the syntax of this and tell in order to make these quantifiers wide, wide scope, which connectives do I have to subsequently move them past one step at a time? So De Morgan's for quantifiers was my next step. Then the next problem I confront is when I wanna move these two quantifiers wide scope, notice that they're both a Y, they're both quantifying over Y, and that is a problem because they can't interfere, they can't have overlapping scope if they're on the same variable. And that means I need to switch one of them to an X. Now, it does not matter which one I chose, so there's more than one correct answer here. But if I choose to switch this Y to an X, I also need to switch the X here. Alternatively, you could have made this an X and this an X, so there's more than one correct answer um, at, the, at the end of the day. Once I've used variable switch, now I can start moving my quantifiers wider. I chose to do the X one first, and this is null quantification. Notice now that this is an X, you can see it's not binding anything in this other disjunct over here. So I can move this quantifier wider onto that disjunction. And when you do this, notice you don't take this quantifier and stick it out front. What you do is you stick it one scope wider. And so it goes past the disjunction and that's why it's slotted in here. It would be incorrect to put it all the way out front. You just move step by step. And so this is where this quantifier would go. Again, the order is not essential here. So you could have done null quantification on this quantifier first too. I'll talk about that in a minute. So um, after I get the X wide scope, now I need to make this one wide scope because the Y is not binding anything down here. So I can move this one and it would slot in here just like before. If it's going wide on the disjunction, it's not going to go past any of these other quantifiers. So there's my, there's my final answer. So this counts as um, in PNF because all the quantifiers are wide scope. Now this is not the only answer. Maybe you decided to turn this uh, disjunction back into its arrow. So this is also perfectly correct because this is still in PNF, all the quantifiers are wide scope, but this one looks the most like that original sentence because it still has the arrow in it. So that's why um, I'm doing that final step. And now let me make one other point. Remember, um, remember quantifier reorders. If the quantifiers are of the same type, you can reorder them. So this is actually a perfectly correct answer too. If I would have chosen to pull the Y out first, then it would come here. And then if I choose the X to come second, it would go here. Or you could just move from this answer, um, the bottom answer here, to this sentence up here using the quantifier reorder principle. So there's not one equivalent PNF form, but if you're asked to put it into PNF, um, this is the thing you absolutely need to do is put all the quantifiers wide scope and do it step by step so that you make sure you see what the quantifiers are using those equivalence principles. Okay, thanks.